invite you, and I really do hope that over the next few Sundays, a few of the adults will actually come forward to watch as the children worship and wonder stories being told. Because it's a very different experience up here than when it is on the screen. Usually when we tell children's stories, our current culture leads us to assume that the story is not meant for us. It is just meant for the children. But that is not really true for these stories. Our culture also assumes that the story being told to a child is being told to impart some learning or knowledge. We are teaching a lesson. We always ask kids, what did you learn today? The first goal we place in front of them when they get off the school bus or come home is, what did you learn? That, however, is not what this program is actually about. Children Worship and Wonder was created so that children learn how to create a space and so that we as adults get out of the way to give them that space to have a true worshipful experience with God. Over the past few months, Many of you in this room have watched the stories being told, and you may even have kind of glimpsed over here the work that is being done by the children. And it is work. It is not just crafts or playtime, but truly tangible ways for these children to work with what they've heard and pray and be in relationship with God. So as we prepare for the Christ child in the season of Advent, Maybe it's important for us to remember what our children are doing and prepare for our children as we prepare for the child of Christ. I want to help you once again understand why in my ministry as a pastor I find children, youth, and young adults as one of my primary focuses. You see, I believe understanding their experience actually helps all of us as adults connect to God in much more powerful ways. As this slide says, while we try to teach our children all about life, our children teach us what life is all about. The passion I have for this program and for children is not actually about getting it right. It's a worship style. It can open up so much more of our understanding as adults and children of how to talk with God, be with God, and hear God's stories. It's not just something that kids need to do, it is something that all of us need to do. And I've noticed, as I've said, that some of us sometimes struggle with it as adults. So maybe it's a really good time for all of us to talk about how difficult it really is to enter our faith like a child. Children Worship and Wonder is a worship experience. It's not Sunday school or a lesson or a children's group program. It is based and created on the same four elements that most worship services are based upon. The gathering, the word, communion, and going forth. You see, when you walk through that door as an adult in this church, I make some assumption that you already know how to worship. I assume as you walk in that you are either seeking or already know some relationship with God. And while we are all at different points or abilities, and some of us may need some more guidance than others, all of us come in to worship. And just like some of us enjoy the music, and some of us enjoy the sermon, and some of us enjoy the communion, we all find different points and ways to engage in this worship experience to connect with God. It is these exact same theories that connect us with worship and wonder. The kids during their orientation are taught how to be in this space. And again and again, they are reminded that they are able already they already know God, they already know how to be in God's presence and hear God, but sometimes, just like all of us, they may need some ways and help to be ready. We have to get out of their way just as we have to get out of our own way. We have to remember that God knows how to be with a three-year-old, and a three-year-old knows how to be with God. 
just like I at 37, know how to be with God as a 37-year-old. And God knows how to be with me. But just like the children, it is hard and it is difficult sometimes to make that space. Sometimes we're just not really ready. And in fact, children are taught that that's okay. It's okay sometimes if you walk into this space and you are really just not ready to worship. We're not always in a place to focus on God in a way that can help us really hear and respond to what God is asking us to do. We must remember that all of us already know God. And they, and children like us, have a relationship with God. And so we just must respect each other. As children of God, no matter what point we are at when we enter into this room. And we must learn to respect our children and youth as fully loved, grace-filled members of the body of Christ. Let's take a moment to really think about that. We sit here for four weeks, five once Christmas comes, preparing for the Christ child. And it's hard to wait. The waiting part is hard, especially when most of society outside of this place thinks that it's already Christmas. They don't quite appreciate that waiting that we need during the Advent season. That waiting we need to reach out to God to say, God, we need you to wait with us. We need you to know us. We need you to know that we are sometimes struggling even in this season of joy and merriment. And we need you, God, to help us, just as you have helped our children, find ways to make space for God. We need to find ways to make space for others. We need to know and be reminded how to listen to God, to talk to God, and to really, once again, hear the stories in a new way that we have already heard. We need to have a mutual respect for our experience, our journey, and our faith as we all move towards Bethlehem again and again. This quote says, because children see parents as authority figures in God's, they think that the way you treat them is the way they deserve to be treated. What you say about me is what I am, is the literal truth to your child. Consequently, consequently, when children are treated with respect, they conclude that they deserve respect and hence develop self-respect. And that means all of a sudden that they reflect back to us as adults what we reflect to them. And that is even scarier than a lot of things we know because that means that they are mirroring back to us behaviors that we know and understand. Let us take a moment, just because any time an ambulance passes, I want to pray for that moment. That hurts my ears. That hurts my ears. Let us remind ourselves as we continue that we are worthy. Once again, I want you to know you are worthy to be here and worship. You are worthy and talk and know God. You are worthy to be God's beloved child, even when all of us as adults sometimes throw tantrums, sometimes we make a mess, sometimes we do not behave, and yet God reminds us that we, just like the children, are some always worthy. We are worthy to have time with God, and we are worthy to be enough, and we must believe that in ourselves so that our children reflect that back to us. We must not only see them as worthy, but realize that through them we are able to see ourselves as much more worthy and powerful. It is so hard. It is so hard for all of us to be enough. It is so hard to just wait. It is so hard to not be afraid, as the scripture reminds us. And we struggle to see that, like Mary, we are actually able to be favored. God is with us. And like Mary, we find ourselves sometimes perplexed by that fact. We try to understand with our brains what can only truly be understood with our souls and our spirits. We try to fill our brains and forget to allow the space and time needed to fill our hearts with God's great peace. Upon hearing the angel's words, Mary's soul sang out. 
not her spelling bee type recitation from Hebrew class. Well, I knew that the angel of the Lord Gabriel was going to show right up now, and so I'm going to be really excited to have the Messiah. That's not the response that she gave. Instead, she reminds us that we again and again must provide space to teach our souls ways to sing out when the Spirit calls us to action. One of the biggest visions and parts of my other job is reminding all of us as families, both in this place and outside of it, how to create space that is truly sacred. It's not about just tangible, it's also about time, reflection, and prayer. And I think the struggle for us as adults with this program sometimes is children are much more able to create space in sacred ways. It isn't that they stop acting like children, it's just they're not yet constantly programmed to be stressed, busy, and unimaginative. They do not live in the moment that must always have a means to an end. They just live in the moment. So it is easier for them to stop and not pay attention to time and allow themselves the space to let the Spirit of God move in. So let us work and struggle and prepare in this Advent season to create space for God. Not space where we just have those one-sided, wishful prayers to God, but space where we try, truly take time to believe that we actually have all the time we need and we do not need to hurry. As busy as the Christmas season is, Advent is about slowing down, creating space, finding patience, waiting, and waiting. What would have happened if Mary was not able to make space for the voice of the angel to be heard? What would have happened if she did not really appreciate and stay open to her part of the story? Let us remember that the prophets again and again remind us there are always going to be stories of promise and that we all have the potential to be a part of those stories of promise. We all have the ability to be enough for God. And while at first that may seem scary, that sense of do not be afraid is what will ultimately bring us peace on this week. Peace with the knowledge that God is with us and we have all the time we need. Let us remember that Mary and Joseph we're enough. We are enough. God is enough. The story is enough. And may this knowledge again and again give us space so that our souls can sing and our spirits can rejoice when the Christ child finally comes again. Amen.